Oh, we're not even... I didn't think this was part of it. Sorry. All right. So welcome to it. This is Nestling's Radio. And we're chilling with Yulu Ishii. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she prefers to be known as Kanya. Kanya Mzongwani. Mzongwani. I don't really care, actually. Really? Yeah. Doesn't make a difference. For real. Doesn't Why make not? a difference. Uh, because, I don't know, like, I guess it just depends on, like, how well you know me. Um, mm-hmm. um, if it's a social media kind of relationship, then... They'll generally just call me Yulu. Mm. <laughs> so then if I know you personally, then it's Kanya. So if a person calls you Kanya, they know you like... Probably. Mm. Probably. But I'm not like that famous yet where it's like completely... Oh, so you are famous. Two different worlds. <laughs> yeah. like At a certain level. <laughs> <laughs> Would you refer to yourself as a celebrity though? No. <laughs> like a celebrity chef? No, dude. Why not though? No, can't, can't do that. Uh, <laughs> Because what does it mean? It's such a worthless title, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, working on TV, it's also working still, you know, like anyone else. Mm-hmm. It's just do it for a wider audience, but like it's meaningless to be a celebrity, I think. So to those who don't know you, please tell us who you are and what you do. Okay, well, um, I'm Kanya. I am a chef. I'm a food stylist. Mm-hmm. I'm a food writer. Um, what else do I do? Oh, um, I also review restaurants, mm-hmm. and um, I do. I own a project, or I head up a project called Off the Wall Pop Up Restaurant, mm-hmm. and um, we also, yeah. So we do all types of. We do product activations, you know, for food brands. We also do a lot of. We do events as well, like our own events. So yeah, like so each year we just kind of place our focus on something new and stuff so last year we were focusing on different you know um countries around the world you know that have like a culinary a rich culinary history or whatever um but this year we're placing our focus more like on you know ingredients and stuff which is the thing i'm really passionate about oh nice so um your background right you you used to own a restaurant with your mom that's back right. in PE, you're from PE originally. Yeah. Please tell us about that, how this journey began, how you actually became into this project, which is not like the, the sole thing that you do, mm-hmm. but part of what you do, is, which is a project. And how wha- or how did your love for food, and I know you've been asked this question so many mm-hmm. times. Yeah. <laughs> and the answer <laughs> changes all the time. Does it? Yeah. And how does like your love for food, I- I- how has it evolved rather over the years? Okay, well... Um, I started out, you know, like come from a family full of women and stuff, you know, like who were always cooking for any reason and stuff, you know, so like I got the ability to cook, you know, from there and then, um, yeah, well learning, it was just, it was always a matter of going to, I always went to different establishments and I'd work there for three months and I'd just quit and stuff, (laughs) so like I think that in PE, I spent like about three years doing that. So yeah, um, I just work in different places and stuff and I'd like it or I'd hate it, but I'd always leave like because I always wanted to be exposed to, you know, food in like different food worlds basically. And yeah, and then like my mom and I opened a restaurant, it didn't work, um, <laughs> but it was fun to why, do. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because we didn't have like our business basics together, you know, like we, we were just, kind of on a creative mission believing that we could just we would just morph into a business and that doesn't happen so yeah so we we, I think um, also our personal financial struggles before we started the business kind of got in the way of us you know like turning it into something really fruitful in the time we had so yeah it was fun was a lot of learning but um, and our I think I didn't I knew it wouldn't work like going into it like I just knew destined to fail but yeah but it was a lot of fun though we ran that for three years 
uh, and then and this is in PE now. Yeah, this is in PE. Okay. So we ran that for three years, and then after that, um, I left and I came to Joburg because. And yeah. when, when is this? Twenty. Twenty. This was in the middle of 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I came to Joburg. I didn't really have anything to do, so the whole idea was just to come here and wing it, you know, and figure it out, figure out a career path for myself. So yeah, spent the first six months just like living on my brother's couch and <laughs> eating McDonald's, not doing anything. So and before we continue, why Joburg specifically? Was it because you had relatives aside? No, no, actually it was because I think it was just a suggestion my aunt came to me with because like uh, basically what happened was, and I'll tell you, I'll give you the lowdown, <laughs> what, what happened was that uh, I went to my aunt's place, it was one of these months where we really struggled with rent and I went to her, to her place, I went to her office and I think that she knew I was coming to ask for rent money and stuff. And I think she was like already prepared with what she was gonna say, you know? So she was like, um, Kanye, you know that I have the money to help you out with rent this month, right? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then she's like, but you know, I'm not gonna help you with rent because it's it's not gonna make sense. You're digging this really big hole for yourself and you know, um, it affects us all, you know? And we think that maybe you should kind of let go of this project and like you know like pursue a new life for yourself and I mean which is like the most loving thing anyone has ever done for me you know like looking back of course yeah I mean it didn't feel that bad as well because obviously we were in a really bad place with the business as well so I think it was good to know that there's an out you know because when you start something you always feel the need to to see it through no matter how like rough it gets and yeah, so so that's how I came to Joburg. She just suggested this as a place, and and I was just like, oh, you're holding the purse strings, so I guess I'll just go there. How bad would it be? So do you feel like the need for you to stay within the business and to make sure that you see it through was also because your mom was part of it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, th- that's like is a big part of the reason, and then also um, it was that, and also just you know feeling as though. Uh, there's just a lot of people that are wanting you to do well and and stuff and you know not wanting to disappoint them as well not wanting to disappoint yourself and we make lots of stupid decisions based on you know things like that Uh, so that was one of the decisions you know like staying on with the business even though like we're totally bankrupt (laughs) yeah Um, so here you are so here you are your, um, your aunt is telling you, no, Kenya, you need to move to Joburg, and um, I know you need rent money, and I'm going to give it to you, but this is an art that you can get, and you can actually do better, and you can take a, a different path and everything, and now you're actually assessing the business, and you're assessing everything that's going on. How does this affect you mentally, emotionally, like, in, in, in a whole realm? How does it affect you personally as Kanye, your confidence, and all those things? Um, you mean like my aunt's suggestion that I come here? No, like your, your aunt's um, actually somebody telling you this, like things that you've been realizing that like, this is not working. Yeah, but I having mean, somebody outside of the circle telling you I guess you it was good for me, you know, to hear it from somebody else because I've always been told that I should just continue and stuff. And I'm the type of person that likes to work on things. And then when I feel like, okay, cool, we did the thing or we, we like, we um, achieved what we were trying to achieve then I want to move on to the next thing, you know, because, like, off the wall, what it was last year is not what it's going to be this year, you know, and I mean, I don't think I'm going to be interested in doing what I'm doing this year next year, depending on how it all goes, but, yeah, there's going to be a lot more planning to this one, I think, a lot more research is going to go into it, it's going to be very detailed, yeah. So here you are, you're in Joburg, you're couch surfing on your brother's <laughs> couch, eating all the McDonald's that you can eat. Watching all the cartoons I can watch. <laughs> Which are your favorite cartoons that you watched at that, at that time? Um, regular show, obviously. <laughs> uh, shit. Well, there are regular show and Adventure Time. Uh-huh. I was like locked on those two. Yeah. And uh, yeah, John Oliver show. Yeah. That was basically what I was watching. You know? All day, every day. <laughs> so what happens there? after that now you're couch surfing and you're here you're in Joburg now finally well I mean obviously got to a point where we're living in a really tiny space me him his girlfriend yeah so I mean but 
his girlfriend is like my sister, so it was cool. But we're living in this really tiny apartment, and it was getting smaller and smaller and yeah. stuff. And I had so much shit. I had like ten bags sitting next to the TV. What? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of clothes, and um, and that's all I had, just clothes and stuff. Mm. So I think it just got to a point where I was like, okay, I actually do need an income. So we did the whole internet research thing, you know, looking for jobs. I got to a point where I was like, you know, I'll even work at the garage as a cashier. Like, oh my I don't care. I just need money now, you uh-huh. know. But then, like, I think it was like the day that I decided that I'm actually leaving and going back to PE, which is like anyone from PE knows that that's like the worst day of your life. Are you serious? Deciding to go back to that place. <laughs> Yo, dude, like. Is it that bad? You must come through a lot of hardship to get to a situation. Really, like I'm going back. Yeah. So, um, what happened was that day that I decided, okay, I'm back home. I'm fucking off now. Mm-hmm. It was the day that I actually found a job on the internet, and it was a job that was in Pretoria. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But then everything like kind of just snowballed, and I found a job and a flat on the same day. And what? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bizarre, but. <laughs> what was the job? Um, I was head chef at a place called Pure Cafe. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, and then the, the flat was upstairs from Pure Cafe, so it was pretty Dude, cool. like, yeah. how did you t- like turn out? So now you're head chef at um, Pure Cafe, mm-hmm. you're in Pretoria now, you finally moved out of your brother's apartment and everything. What happens next? Yeah, so I worked at Pure Cafe and, I, like I do everything else, ended up hating it. Uh, <laughs> so I left, and that's, whilst I was in the process of leaving, then, um, also, Akil and I came up with the idea for Off the Wall, you know, and we're just like, okay, there's this idea that I have in my head of us working together somehow. Um, I even have a name for it, but I'm just like, what are we actually going to do? Where are we going to operate? And, you know, let's just try and figure something out. Let's figure out another way of getting an income that isn't, you know, it's excruciating jobs, you know, that we have to do and stuff. So, that sound the city of Joburg. I know. <laughs> saying, can we continue? Yeah, we can. I think it's audible. Is it irritating you, your vibe? No, no, it's not irritating me. I'm okay. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so we're just trying to figure out like a way to work together, to make our own money, to, you know, just find some type of independence. And then, yeah, so Off the Wall was born. That was like June 2014. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I obviously quit my job and I wasn't ready to quit <laughs> at all. Why I wasn't financially quit? ready. Why? Because you were just fed up. Yeah, because I mean that uh, that structure, you know, the structure of, you know, like industrial kitchens just doesn't work for me for many reasons. But um, yeah, because there's like this whole hierarchy thing and it doesn't really matter how good you are, you know, like your your talent is not dependent on what you earn mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is a type of world that I would prefer to live in. So, yeah, so then, so I ended up leaving and then we started off the wall. It was very, like, makeshift at the beginning. We didn't have anything. We didn't have a single plate, a single chair. So, yeah, so it was a lot of, like, hiring. And it was just, it just started out as a very expensive project, you know, one that ended up costing us a lot of money. Where are you getting this money now to run off the wall? Well, what we're doing is we're selling tickets, so it kind of, does so pre-sale tickets yes we did pre-sales because i mean it's food so you know you can't like just gamble and cook a whole lot of food and expect people to show up mm-hmm. so we do pre-sales and uh yeah and then people show up and stuff but we didn't know how to handle our money and you know it was just it was haphazard yeah haphazard it was a mess and yeah so we didn't know how to handle that and stuff so we kind of took like a really bad nosedive and then we're like okay so what are we going to do now because we want to continue with off the wall but mm-hmm like how are we going to do it so we decided okay i think the best thing to do is to get a venue first you know like yeah. find like a venue you know like like-minded individuals and stuff you know so we did find a venue that we're working with the whole of last year mm-hmm. and yeah so we started working with them in october 2015 and then yeah. worked with them right up until now so yeah now that i'm i have all these other different associations mm-hmm. So like we're gonna move around a lot, and we're gonna be we're gonna be more Joburg focused. We're gonna be more hood focused as well. So exciting times for off the wall, hey. So now yes. um, you're collaborating with Sakine. Sakine yeah. is the DJ mm-hmm. in the DJ bubbles mm-hmm. within the organization. So he 